Hey, what's up you guys? It's Six. Welcome back to my channel. So I know this week's video may not be exactly what you were expecting. I know I was talking a lot about Jillian in the last video, so you were probably expecting another Jillian focused video. And the truth is, this was supposed to be a Jillian focused video, but very incredibly last minute I decided that I was going to join Art Fight. I was, I was gonna join Art Fight. Uh, and I know you might be thinking, Six, didn't you just spend the last video talking about how, like, you have no OCs that you can post on the line and talk about on the line? So therefore, like, Jillian's great because she's a, a fresh little baby and, like, you, you can talk about her because there's nothing to talk about yet. <laughs> yes, that is true. I did say that. However, I wanted to join Art Fight so bad. <laughs> I've seen Art Fight for years now. For the, uh, like, I think since the, oh God. Um, and Wither and Bloom was not my first experience with Art Flight. Art Flight? Art Fight. Um, but it is the first sort of like team gathering that I can think of. I don't know what others were before that. Um, but I, I had seen Art Fight prior to that. Um, but I've, I've been seeing it for a long time. <laughs> I've been seeing it for a long time and wanting to join. And um, when I first saw it, I was like, I'm not good enough at art to do Art Fight not true anybody in in their whole life that can pick up a pencil or a pen or a tablet or whatever is good enough to join art fight do it <laughs> if you're thinking about joining art fight do it because like even just the hype building up to art fight has been making me like so creatively like focused and jazzed i've been wanting to do so much stuff um so if you're thinking about joining art fight do it um so, because I was thinking about doing it, I decided to go back through my Instagram and my social media in general, um, find what characters I've already posted before or what characters I haven't posted but feel uh, comfortable posting uh, and, and put those up on Art Fight. So you will see me rendering out each of those characters here on my little Art Fight card, which if you haven't guessed already, I've joined Team Stardust. I I'm so excited. Um, I did my little portrait in the corner first because I didn't know that I was going to be filming this card for a video, but then I was like, wait, art fight prep video sounds really fun. I do, I do want to do that. So I have decided uh, to go ahead and do that. I am probably, don't hold me to this, don't hold me to this because I don't know, um, going to be posting a video of all of their individual um, like main bus portraits that I did for their references here in the future, possibly towards the latter half of this month. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Well, this month, latter half of next month, or maybe the earlier half of next month um, in July when Art Fight officially starts. Um, but this is just like the prep of me like coming up with what characters um, I'm going to be drawing. And then me, of course, again, as you can see, illustrating my Art Fight card. So, um, if you've never heard of Art Fight before, which, cl cl completely clarifying, this is not, um, like an Art Fight tips video. I don't know anything about Art Fight <laughs> other than the, the main sort of aspect of it, so this is not an Art Fight tips video. If you want one of those, you're gonna have to jump somewhere else because this is my first year, <laughs> my first year doing it. I don't know anything. Navigating the site was so difficult you have no idea as a first time user it was so confusing for me um getting my profile together was so confusing for me i don't know how to do html i really don't i don't know how to do vvc code i don't know how to do anything on, on like a uh, website design or anything like that so it was very very confusing for me but i eventually got it figured out i set up my little profile it was very really cute uh, i made it little twin stars themed because again i'm on team stardust so i thought that would be very cute but anyways let's get into the dang characters that are in this video because we're four minutes in and I haven't even talked about any of them. So, you guys know Jillian from my last video. Jillian uh, is my little axolotl witch that I will be developing. I'm hoping to develop her in a way through Art Fight um, because I know so little of her character other than the fact that like she's an axolotl, <laughs> she's a witch, she's very bright colors and pastel. That's all that I know about her. Um, so I'm hoping that like other people will see her and like be inspired by her and maybe draw her doing some cool things. So I can kind of be like, 
oh yes, oh, Jillian would like that thing. Let me expand on that because I just, I don't know how to write characters myself. It's very difficult. It's very hard. Very, very difficult. So I'm hoping through Artfight um, I'm able to expand on her any, or, or like any more, <laughs> expand on her some more. Um, next character we have in our little lineup, we have my character Nyris. Bear with me. Her backstory is... I don't want to say it's cringe because cringe is dead. I fully believe that there is no such thing as cringe or there should not be any such thing as cringe because people having fun should not be a cringeworthy thing. That being said, I did write Nyris circa like 2014, so some of her character is very 2014. <laughs> um, so I do, I do know some vague things about Nyris. I made her a goddess because I was very into Greek mythology in 2014, as I'm sure many of us were. Um, but she's sort of like an ex-Olympian kind of thing because I had her um, kind of like be super, super interested in humans and in like um, in their sort of lore, I guess, that I have for the story that she's in. That's not really good. You're not supposed to mess with them. You're not supposed to talk to them. You're not supposed to like show like a super ton of interest in them. But she was like directly speaking to them, <laughs> like directly talking to them. And so they were like, you cannot do that, girl. You can't do that. Stop doing that. And she didn't because she couldn't. They're all like just sweet little babies. Not all of them, clearly. Um, but like just in general, she was very much like interested in them and thought they were really cool um and so they were like you like them so much go down there go down there and be with them don't come back up here <laughs> stop doing that you're weird um so she walks among humans she's still immortal she still has her um powers because they um <laughs> i so i am someone that experiences anxiety correct right so um <laughs> i thought it would be cool if there was like a a god or like a goddess of like not mental health as a whole but like more more specifically focused on anxiety because that's what i was dealing with a lot um when i made her as a character so she has like very like calming sort of like soothing sort of powers um like if somebody is uneasy being in her presence being around her is just like instantly calming and that that's pretty much it she just is like a very quite literally a calming person um and so i figured that she would still have that because i feel like um as far as powers go it's not something that they would really take seriously or feel the need to take away from her because it's not really seen as a power i guess um so she still has that she's still immortal but i have her like um she kind of changes with the the eras that i go through um because again she's immortal so she's constantly trying to blend in with like current trends and like seem like she's of the era that she's in obviously um so as of right now i've been drawing her in lots of like cottage core um but like i kind of shift around aesthetics a lot with her because she she is supposed to be someone where she can just blend in wherever <laughs> so like i draw her in a lot of cottage core but like she very easily could be like gen z y2k like emo scene core kind of situation <laughs> um i just i prefer to draw her um in like softer stuff because uh she's very much um softly focused she also quite literally has a deer familiar so like she is cottage core she despite the fact that she was made in 2014 need i remind you she was very pastel goth when i made her <laughs> she was full on i mean 2014 like grid pastel skirt and uh like upside down cross t-shirt it was terrible <laughs> very tumblr 2014 when i made her um she still had the fawn back then her little deer familiar she still had that <laughs> but just was like very like punk emo like oh but it was bad it was it was really really bad <laughs> Um, but she's grown since then. She's now very cottage core and the, the familiar fits in much, much easier now. Um, so that's Nyris. I love her. Moving on to next in the lineup. Who is next in the lineup? I think it's Remy. I think it's Remy. If I'm a little out of order, forgive me. I don't have this in front of me as I'm recording. Um, so the next character, I guess I'm just going to go straight into it, is Remy. Paul, oh, I hope so. I hope it's Remy. Um, <laughs> 
he is a sort of like a witchy character that I have. He's, um, <laughs> he, he was initially along with Nyrus very 2014 um, pastel goth. Um, but whereas I've kind of shifted Nyrus' aesthetic to be something more um, like, you know, soft and cottagey um, and very much like you know, uh, comfort kind of clothing, I guess. Um, I've switched Remy over to like staying in the, the more like alternative, alternative area where I've had him kind of like embracing the like streetwear slash like goth side of things where he, he's like very dark. <laughs> he's very edgy. Um, he likes big baggy, baggy clothes, lots of layers, lots of like spikes and jewelry and stuff like that. So he's still kind of keeping the, the heart, the core, of his 2014 self, um, but just like modernizing it a little bit, making it a little more um, of the times, I guess you can say, which I think is honestly genuinely what I would have wanted for him initially when making him, but I was so bad at character design. <laughs> I was so bad at character design, um, and I was just copying what I saw online. <laughs> and all, what I was seeing online was 2014 Tumblr grunge aesthetic. <laughs> so that's what all of my characters were. Um, but I feel like if I had been exposed to streetwear and stuff like that, um, upon creating him, that that's, this is, this is his true self. This is what he would have been had I been, uh, exposed to other aesthetics, but I was not. <laughs> so that's how, uh, that's how Remy ended up looking. But I'm so, so happy with his design now. Um, I've made his hair a little tiny bit longer because it used to be like a short sort of like side swept thing, which like fine, that's very like Justin Bieber of him, whatever. Um, but I, I ended up giving him, um, uh, kind of like a like kind of like a wolf cut that's not exactly what i was going for i was going for like kind of like a well i guess a, like a layered mullet is a wolf cut isn't it kind of a wolf cut but a little shorter i just wanted him to have like um kind of like a little bit of long length in the back but like a like a thin amount that was long and then like kind of like as you go up it gets like shorter and more choppier i don't know how to describe this okay i just wanted him to look cool I just wanted him to look cool. <laughs> so I did that. Uh, I kept his little white streaks in his hair because I actually thought those were really cool. Um, I liked like how those looked in his initial design, which if you want to see how he looked in his initial design, you, you can go back and find him on my Instagram. But it, oh, I'm warning you. It's a jump scare. It is real far down. <laughs> so good luck finding it. It's like almost to the bottom of my Instagram. But anyway, um, I, I, I kept some of the aspects of his uh, initial design because I feel like they're still um, relevant to how I would want him to look. Um, and then I just put him in a big yaggy, yaggy, <laughs> baggy Yale t-shirt um, because I just, I feel like he would wear it whether or not he went to Yale. He is like a very smart kid. I feel like he would go to an Ivy League. Uh, I just don't know which one. <laughs> And I don't know how long he would be there necessarily because he's kind of a bad kid. <laughs> he's very smart. Um, he does suck. <laughs> like, he doesn't like suck suck. Like he is like a good like it, in in terms of like good versus evil character. He is a good character. He just is a dick. <laughs> He, he's a little bit of a, a stinker. He's kind of mean, but like he is a, like a good character. He's just like that. He, he just is like that. And everybody around him knows like if you say, if he says something mean to you, he doesn't hate you. He just quite literally does not how to, like he doesn't know how to not be mean. Because his whole family, that's just how he was raised. Everybody sucks to each other. <laughs> so he sucks to everyone because he's like, that's how people show love right cool okay um so yeah that's that's remy um moving on we have august over here so august is a um blatant blatant like sabrina self-insert i don't know it will not self-insert because i obviously look nothing like august but like character insert um i guess he's not actually in like the sabrina universe he just has a lot of influences from sabrina the teenage witch which if you grew up in the 2000s you know what i'm talking about you know what i'm not talking about the remake by the way i hate the remake i tried to get into it but it was just like so like why are you making it so dark it literally is like riverdale but sabrina and it upsets me so much because Sabrina was supposed to be like a feel good, like slice of life if she was a witch kind of situation. Um, 
But the Sabrina remake is like, what if we made everything dark and about the devil? Like, shut up. Shut up, actually. But like, that's not... That's not the point of Sabrina. But okay. Okay. You can do all of that stupid stuff. I stopped watching, I think, like very beginning of season two anyways y2k early 2000s sabrina the teenage witch um very very cute show i loved it as a kid um and so a few aspects of him are inspired by that of course starting with the fact that he is a witch um i tried to give him a very like uh preppy slash like whimsicoth sort of aesthetic um he's got the bright red glasses because for some reason sabrina was in red i feel like a lot um i'm like i don't know if i'm like exactly it in my brain but I feel like a lot of parts of her in the show she's in like bright red um and I feel like they do this a lot in the the um the I don't want to call it a remake but like the spin-off the I don't know <laughs> the, the CW was it even CW it feels CW <laughs> the other version of Sabrina she's in a lot of red and stuff too so maybe maybe that was the truth I don't know um but I put them in with little red glasses they are a requirement the shape may change but he's gotta he's gotta have those red rims on um so yeah uh and then just like as far as like him and his craft goes him and his personality as well as his little familiar because he does have one as well um yeah I tried to keep him like preppy sort of whimsicott um he's a very sweet boy <laughs> I mean like he is so um like the nicest kid you have ever met um incredibly like I I don't know I think I'm gonna have him be um what do they call it when you're a, an ambivert because I feel like he's very much like drawn in on himself unless he likes you and then he's yapping I mean he's talking so much he's super excitable um he's very into I make friends I want to make friends I have friends my friends like me yay um kind of person um very like just excitable but like if you're not like in that circle then he's like very withdrawn he's kind of like anxious very um just like not good at socializing kind of thing um so there's that for like kind of his personality and then as far as like again his craft goes he's not good he is not good at it. He, mm, <laughs> he, oh no, no, no. He's really, really bad at it. He tries so hard. It's not without trying. He's not bad for the sake of he's not practicing. It's just that when he practices, things go very, very, very wrong a lot. Um, and, and he's, he's struggle bossing it a little bit. He's struggle bossing it a little bit, but he's trying. He really, really, really wants to be good at it. He's just not, <laughs> but he will be maybe maybe in the future but not right now <laughs> right now he's really really bad um he also has a familiar like i mentioned and this is where the biggest sabrina influence comes in he has a crow uh and his name is salem because i feel like he would quite literally name him after salem sabrina <laughs> salem sabrina uh, the, the cat from sabrina i feel like he would name him after him because similar to salem and sabrina he is a jerk <laughs> But different in the way that like Sabrina Salem is like not always not always a jerk But like he's got that sarcastic sort of like Get it together attitude, but it's more so in Salem's case because like it, I say more so in Salem's cases if they're not both named Salem more so in the crow Salem's case because he's so like specifically focused on like his craft and being like you suck at being a witch you really need to work on that like you were so bad at this please i'm begging you like do better because <laughs> this is not you're not this ain't it august come on get it together get it together um so yeah i feel like I'm, i feel like they're at each other's throats a lot and maybe there are a lot of times where august feels as if he does not like him like quite genuinely um but when it comes down to it salem does like august or he wouldn't be there um he knows that he needs him he wants to see him succeed and he feels as though him being kind of a jerk <laughs> is what will eventually make august better even though it probably won't um you know <laughs> i i just feel like that's their dynamic maybe it will change in the future but for right now 
<laughs> Salem sucks and August is a really sweet kid. Um, moving on to our final character here. You guys may have seen this character before if you have been on the channel for a very, very long time, um, circa like 2020, which I don't know if I did this video in 2020. Might have done it later, but I feel like I did it in 2020 um, because that's when Animal Crossing New Horizons came out. And why am I mentioning Animal Crossing New Horizons? That is because this is my island representative. Uh, their name is Ren. They're a very cool character. I say, as I have no story for them. <laughs> They're just my island representative. It is my Animal Crossing self-insert. I love them. I think they're very cool. Um, the only thing I literally have in their bio is that they're they're, they're my island representative um, and also that Bo is their baby <laughs> because Bo is my baby. You guys have no idea the pain, the anguish I felt because I decided like a, a couple of weeks before New Horizons came out, I was like, I should boot up New Leaf again because I haven't played in so long and New Horizons is about to come out and I just want to look at my town and everything. And Bo moved away. Bo is my favorite villager and he moved away and that broke my heart. I was like, what do you mean? What do you mean he left me? What do you mean? Because if you haven't played prior to New Horizons. Your villagers used to be able to move away and leave you without asking. They would just go. They'd be like, oh, I had to. I had to I had to follow I had to follow my spirit. I had to go. I had to go. I'm sorry, I'll miss you, but I have to leave. And they'll just be gone one day. And you can't do anything. And so when I booted up New Leaf and I saw that he left me, I was like, no, no. I was distraught. But then imagine my my delight, my shock, my surprise when I start playing New Horizons and I go to my first mystery island and who is there? Who is there but Bo? He was moving to come back to me. That is what I believe. So I was like, you're you're coming home with me. You you don't get a choice. You're you're coming home with me. You are staying on my island forever. All of the kittens in my yard are looking at me. Oh my god. Hello, little angels. They're looking directly at me. That was crazy. Anyways, hello, babies. <laughs> Anyways, um, I love Bo. He's my favorite character. Um, so if people draw Ren and Bo interacting during Art Fight, I'm gonna cry because they are so like sibling energy. They're so silly together. I really, really love them. Um, I genuinely don't have any lore for Ren. <laughs> so that's a fun way to round this video off. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. It was definitely a lot of chaos. Like I said, I may or may not do um, a video in the future about their actual like bust portraits outside of this little um, team card but yeah um just as a reminder i am team stardust so if you are on seafoam drop your drop your at in the comments so i can come for you when art fight <laughs> officially starts on the first drop your drop your at if you're uh stardust too because i i do do potentially friendly fires <laughs> because this is my first year i don't know how many attacks or revenges i'm gonna end up being able to get to um but just if you are joining Art Fight in general, but especially if you're Seafoam, <laughs> drop it down below um, and I will go and I will find you and I will, I will follow you. I will bookmark all of your characters and I, I may or may not be coming for you. So yeah, I'm very, very, very excited for that. Of course, last minute, I want to give a huge shout out to my patrons for allowing me the, the time in my schedule um, to do stuff for art fight for like giving me that security in my mind having money so that i can do a lot of personal work for myself and a bunch of other people that is very very cool if you want to support me and my artwork in general you can check out the patreon It'll be linked down in the description alongside all of my other social media if that is something that you're interested in i love you guys so so much and i'll see y'all in the next one bye